they've got some advanced chapters available online for new where there is no doctor. And I just want to share a little bit from their vaccine chapter that they've got available online again for this is the this is the new where there is no doctor as distinguished as distinct from the 2022 edition of where there is no doctor. Vaccines prevent illness. They go through, how do they work? How do they work? How do they work? Vaccinations work. Vaccines are safe. I'm going to talk about a little bit of the other stuff in here, but they make these, again, blanket statements. Vaccines work. Vaccines are safe. This is an eminently gameable position, and with COVID, we saw it gamed. I don't know how often we've been gamed before. Convince everyone that vaccines are a good. I'm convinced. Put anything that you want everyone to take into a category called vaccines, and then behind the scenes, kind of change the definition of vaccines, or maybe don't even worry about it because most people aren't tracking. Once you've called a thing a vaccine, vilify anyone who says, I'm not taking that. I'm not at risk for the disease it prevents against. It doesn't actually prevent against the disease you say it does. It's not safe and you couldn't possibly know it is, so I know you've already lied to me. Any number of reasons that you might not want to take something that they have decided to try to shove down your throat by calling it a vaccine. This, unfortunately, does the same trick. Vaccinations work. Well, I believe that I have seen evidence that some vaccinations work. Vaccinations don't work across the board, right? Yeah, it doesn't match either the history of vaccines that have been tested and failed or the vaccines that have been released and recalled. Exactly. Same with vaccines are safe. So, you know, people are better than this, are smarter than this. And when you simply put falsehoods in front of them, they trust less and less. And this, like, this was an amazing resource, and I think largely still is. And again, this this little section is from a different book that's about to come out with an almost identical title. What if my child is sick when vaccinations are scheduled? Remember, so this is the last thing I'll do here, and then I'll get off this topic for now. Um, remember the conversation we just had and what was in the 1992 version of Where There Is No Doctor, which says, don't, don't give immunizations when your child is sick. Uh, because something like one in three cases of polio may actually have been produced by uh, injections that were given when the child maybe already had a low-lying case of polio that then got you know shot into a really bad territory by the fact of the ter- by the fact of the immunization. Here we have in a not yet released book an advanced chapter online of new where there is no doctor. What if my child is sick when vaccinations are scheduled? Vaccinations can be given to someone with a cold or minor illness. If a child has a serious health problem, the health worker will tell the family if a vaccination should be delayed. When others in the family and the community are vaccinated, it will help prevent sickness in those who cannot receive a vaccine. They seem to be reversing, not just disappearing the previous advice, but now reversing the previous advice. Vaccinations can be given to someone with a cold or minor illness. No, I don't think they should be. No. And if a child has a serious health problem, the health worker will tell the family if a vaccination should be delayed. What are the chances, again, that a health worker in a rural area with a family that has made a long trek and at great expense, personal, monetary, everything, to get to the health clinic is going to say, not today, come back in a week? Because for the most part, that family is not going to come back in a week. Healthcare workers are not going to even, even if they were informed, and increasingly there's less chance of them being informed because now they're getting told things that aren't true, but even if they were informed about the risk of giving immunizations to sick children, they are really unlikely to say, I can't do that now. I can, I can, you know, I can immunize the rest of you, but not, not little Timmy because he's sick right now. Yeah, and you know, going back to our conversation of a few weeks ago, even just saying, you know, vaccines are safe. Hey, guess what? That's another violation of Nuremberg right there, right? Just a casual violation. And I must say, it's a little hard to know what exactly goes into giving such rotten advice. Um, But the, uh, I find it sort of despicable that we have people in the first world who know that that sentence can't even be true, Mm -hmm. who are dispensing that 
advice to people in places where they don't have the ability to check it against anything. Right. And uh, anyway, so there's a, I don't know, I don't know what it is. I don't know if it's a class issue or a whatever other kind of arrogance it might be, but there's something very wrong with dispensing, uh, dispensing unnuanced information where a parent has an absolute right to know the truth as we understand it, which is maybe at best this vaccine is understood to be safe enough that it is worth whatever risk comes with it, mm -hmm. right? But this is just, you know, vaccines are safe. There is no defending that statement. It is not That's a right. true statement. Okay, one more thing. Yeah. Just one more thing here. Um, I don't know, my screen may have blinked it out, but if, out. okay. Uh, this is again, the, the bottom of this advanced chapter on vaccines um, to be published soon in a book called New, Where There Is No Doctor. The number and type of vaccinations have changed compared to my first child. Why? For some diseases, more than one pharmaceutical company makes a vaccine that is safe and works well. They may have different schedules. So if two countries use a different vaccine brand or the same country changes from one to another, the schedule of injections may change too. Other changes happen when a new vaccine is created or an old one is no longer needed. There's a lot to unpack there. The thing that I want to point out is that Presumably, I would have assumed that most of the reason for the vaccine um, schedule to change, the childhood vaccine schedule to change, is because we now have vaccines against diseases that we didn't have vaccines against before. And to some degree, like with smallpox and polio, we've actually fully eradicated them. And so you don't need the vaccination anymore, at least um, for, for many, of, many of us. But that, um, that part of this answer comes last. The bulk of the answer, the majority of the answer here to why does the vaccine schedule look different than it did for my first kid is it's about pharma. Like they just put it right up at the front. It's about the pharmaceutical companies and they're all safe and effective. We know that. And they just sometimes have different schedules. And so maybe your country used to be getting theirs from Merck and now it's getting it from, uh, you know, AstraZeneca. Who can say? But I'm, it's fine. It's fine. That seems to be sort of the overall, like, don't you worry your pretty little head about it. Uh, it's, you know, yes, yeah, sometimes there's new vaccines, sure, but really it's about the pharmaceutical companies and they got your back. So we're good. Well, look, I hate to have fallen into a well of cynicism and I'm doing my best yeah. to avoid it. But, you know, once you spot this issue of pharma having this deeply perverse incentive, right? Pharma masquerades as wanting to create health, right. but of course sure. its bottom line is facilitated when there's ill health uh, or threat to health mm -hmm. that demands um, its products. One thing that is true, you know, I was surprised to see in that little description that the vaccine is no longer needed. Oh, that suggests we've defeated a disease. It doesn't sound very good for demand. So I guess what I would predict. Well, but I mean that that's consistent with um, with smallpox. Like they they the twenty twenty two edition of the original book um, doesn't have smallpox mentioned at all. Whereas the nineteen ninety two edition mentions it and says actually we, we've done this. We we've been there. We did that. You don't need this anymore. Right. But my prediction then yes. is if what we are seeing is a medical landscape that is actually being driven by. Uh, fiscal considerations inside of pharma, which I increasingly believe is the dominant player, then um, you would imagine that we will stop at any potential to drive um, pathogens to extinction that are the basis of demand for pharmaceutical products will at least not happen while those products are under patent. That in fact, the ideal yep. for, uh, for pharma is a vaccine or something that masquerades as one and therefore gets called things like safe, right? That does not block the spread of disease, but has some credible claim to being desirable so that it will be made into the standard of care and in a really good week for pharma will be inflicted on the public under mandate, right? Yeah. That's what you want is something that doesn't control the disease because the disease is after all the reason for the demand. Yeah. Right. And you wouldn't want to go around curing diseases because, you know, you that would be the naive pharma thing to do. Um, so anyway, my prediction is we're going to see an awful lot of the explosion of schedules of standard of care for items that happen to be profitable. And then we'll see shenanigans like we discussed, I believe, last week 
where a perfectly viable drug has now been put into a new triple cocktail that is now suddenly, again, reviving the patentability of the thing, right? You're just going to see endless versions of the same game. And um, anyway, I would love to be proven wrong, but yes. I'm not expecting it. Yes.